Righto gang, I'm up here in the uh, in the Yukon, and uh, I'm, I've been privileged, absolutely privileged, to join with a couple of great hunters from the US who have been here chasing sheep and caribou, and to see this monstrous caribou taken uh, has been just a well, to me, an honour. It's something that I've I've wanted to uh, see again for many years, especially after hunting the, the BC caribou. Uh, and now to be up here and to see these monsters, it's just fantastic. Big poor town. Booner, baby. <laughs> no. Nice caribou, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Nice job, Reg and Austin. Yeah, thanks, Reg. Great job. My backpack was almost heavier, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's superb. Yeah. Just turn it a little bit as you go there, Reg. Like that, maybe? Yeah, and then another way. Magnificent. Isn't that a nice one? From the point of view of our, our guys in our ridge group and whatever, I thought it might be interesting to to look at the jawbone off this off this big bull and look at the similarities, look at the differences. Um, from what I understand, and again, I'm no biologist, I've just picked up, learnt along the way over many years especially working with great people like, like Brian Murphy from uh, Quality Deer Management Association, now the National Deer Association, uh, there in America, just the stuff he's taught us. I see some really striking similarities. Okay, the uh, similarities and differences. Okay, so there seems to be seven uh, teeth in the rack, the same as a red deer back home. There seems to be eight incisors on the front, same as a red deer back, uh, back home. I see differences there where these um, incisors down here are very small. They're very, very small. Our red deer ones are much, much bigger. Same shape, different. The nerves where they come out of the jaw are very, very similar. Here, in front of the uh, premolars, is very fine, very, very fine there compared to a red. And the front here is quite fine. And this is for a, an animal that seems to have a big buff nose on it. And there seems to be a lot more lip, a lot more insulation, a lot more skin around there. The mandible where it goes back is actually finer and straighter than a red deer, which hooks more and is thicker in here. Same sort of joint, uh, joint in the same place same heel on it, very similar. What I notice with this bull, there's a fair distance here between the last, the cusp and the and the uh, mandible, where it swings back, which to me, right, I'm looking at the age of this stag, this bull, looks to be a bit of age. Uh, I turn him over, I look here and I see a gap in that tooth. And when I line them up, the first premolar way out by itself for some reason just an abnormality there we'll look at it here and say okay we'll get this sharpie when when a red deer is born it's got one tooth which is this double tooth here double peg tooth the first permanent molar before it when it's born it's got a rack of like three and one together of baby teeth which are cast out and the one one two three premolars erupt and go in place as permanent uh, teeth so that's got the first permanent molar and that's um and that's the P-E-R, say, permanent, first permanent molar. So when it's born, it's got baby teeth, first permanent molar, and as the mandible grows back, the next tooth erupts, which is this one, the second permanent molar. As it goes further back, this one erupts, is the third. And as it goes further back, 
this little tooth at the end here, which we call a cusp, is in there, is on the back. So very, very similar to the red deer. As it then ages, the mandible keeps going back further from the teeth. So to me, that's saying, you know, if the mandible was right close here, that would be a younger animal rather than an older animal. Uh, the incisors have got a lot of wear on them. They're worn down. You see the dentine coming through there, the brown. They're worn down. So that they all have baby teeth. The baby teeth are thrown out. The permanent molars come in. They're not worn right down to the gum, but they're still worn. So I'm not saying an ancient animal. I'm saying mature. When you look at the first, second, and third premolars, they've all got wear on them, which again says older rather than younger. I look at the first permanent molar, and what we're looking at is the amount of brown, the dentine, compared to the white, which is the enamel on the side. So we're looking for wear, because that tooth, which is like this for a start, which is joined together, there's no um, smiley face. That smiley face you see in there is called the infundibulum. There's no infundibulum showing. On this one, there is. Probably none on that one because it's outside. It's not even meshing with the top teeth on the top jaw. So we forget about that side. These ones are showing wear on that. So we look here and say this tooth has got all the wear of that bull for his whole life in that, in that structure there. He's definitely well worn on the lingual, the inside of the, um, of the uh, tooth. Well worn there. With the red deer, they'll have all their teeth in place, replaced by about three and a half year old. So let's count them the same. I'd say definitely three and a half years. This teeth, tooth here will have less wear because it's erupted later. So is it still worn? Yes, it's well worn in there, in the, uh, in the uh, lingual side of that uh, infundibulum. So three and a half, I'll give it four and a half. Is this one well worn? Well, definitely it's well worn in there. It's actually pinching right down into that infundibulum. Again, I'll give it five year old on that. For us, the back cusp, it will be islandized. The infundibulum in the middle will be islandized, will be fully worn all the way around, like you see on that one there and that one, by the time they're six and a half year old. Okay, so let's give him six and a half. We go back now to the first permanent molar again, and what I want to see is double the amount of brown in there to the amount of white dentine. So double the amount of uh, dentine, sorry, to the amount of enamel. Yes, it's got that. So I'll call him seven and a half. If I come to here and say double, it's starting to pinch in more, but I think I could still give it double. So that's eight and a half. We come to this one, that's starting to pinch in don't know whether I could give him double. So we've definitely got eight and a half. If I say nine and a half, okay, nine and a half, we come back to the first permanent molar. At ten and a half, usually the infundibulum is totally worn down. It's flat on a red deer. And there could be a little tiny little bit of infundibulum left, but it should be nearly worn right down. That one isn't. And I look at that then, and this is where you probably need to make a judge on it if you're doing it by eye, and say, I think that's going to take more than a year to get back to wear right down, but not really. So I'm calling eight and a half, nine and a half year old, by eye, no two sectioning, anything like that, just looking at that. And I'm tending to go with the front teeth and the width in here, the wear that I'm seeing right across it, it's not too sharp on the lingual side, it's actually worn down. I'm, I'm tempted to go nine and a half, but I think to be safe, I'd say eight and a half year old. Now, from what I've talked to the guides and that in, through the area that I've met, they think that a caribou bull, once it's hit 10, 11 year old, it's, it's on the way out. Like it's gonna be lucky to survive through winters. 
Uh, I'd love to see more jawbones to be able to make a determination on that to see what age they get to. But I think the moment these guys start to fail, that they're getting a little bit frail or their uh, teeth are starting to get impaction, maybe an abscess or something on there, that they're going to get killed. They're bear bait, wolf bait by then. So probably a 10, 11 year old bull is an old bull. So to me, this one is in its prime, the perfect time to take this animal. It's just, yeah, fantastic. So that's just my thoughts on it. Um, again, no biologist. This is just picked up from, you know, 40 odd years of working with these things. So, yep, that's what we're doing.